Hi, I made a video similar to this several, uh, like about a year ago, but someone uh, illegally doctored it and truncated it because my YouTube channel has been hacked by an international cabal of idiots, and criminals, and thieves, and worse. So anyway, I'm going to make this video again, and I have something new to say about it because I met someone else that belongs in it. It's called, You Never, Un you Never Know Who's Homeless Until You Know. I have met some of the, the most astonishingly intelligent, courageous people who are homeless in the street. Why? Because I actually talk to them and respect their dignity and try to help them sometimes. And I have struggled horribly in spite of my own motivation, education, intellect, because of, you know, in spite of everything I've got going for me, including motivation you know, to provide sincere service to the world, I too have struggled very, very horribly financially in my life at times. So it doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter how motivated you are. Motivation is probably more important to, you know, to your life than, serve, than uh, mere intellect. But um, all kinds of people can be struggling, and sometimes it's only because they're very good. Yeah. I met a guy who said he'd been in the military, beautiful young man, had just given his last blanket to a homeless woman who was only homeless because her boyfriend had beaten her and she'd fled from him in fear and was homeless at two in the morning wearing, uh, you know, not wearing a warm outfit. So he gave her a blanket. I tried to give him some food. He refused to take it because he knew at the time I was struggling financially. But he said, you've got to understand, I think you do more than most, that particularly veterans, veterans can end up homeless precisely because they wouldn't do what he called the worst the government wants us to do in the field. He'd been in, I think, Afghanistan, and his CO wanted him to do something that violated international treaties and was basically war crime, and he wouldn't do it, and his CEO, his CO, commanding officer, threatened him with homelessness and poverty when he got out of the service. He said he didn't think that the guy had that much control over his future, but apparently he did. And that is not the first time I have heard that people who won't do the, the worst as military personnel end up with horrible struggles uh, later. I met a beautiful 25-year-old man, looked like a Viking, could have been my son, uh, crying behind a Taco Bell once time, up, oh, free product, um, free perk for Taco Bell, and he was crying because although he had a Ph.D. in Shakespearean literature, a Ph.D. in Shakespearean literature, he didn't know enough to know that when he had gotten behind in his rent and got a three-day pay-and-quit notice that it, there were some legal recourse to that, and he could have at least stayed there, worked with a landlord, made partial payments, and gotten more time. He didn't read the whole thing. He just left and ended up crying I gave him five dollars for some food, and I'll never forget him. He was the smartest anybody I've ever known. I have met a former bank vice president. She was homeless in the street. She was from London. She couldn't believe that that was her American dream. I met a man who was crying, sobbing, middle-aged man, said he used to gross a million dollars and support uh, several employees in an accounting firm, and I met a guy who would not do their worst for a major internationally renowned chemical company. He said he had a PhD in chemistry, and he said he wouldn't uh, create for them something similar to Roundup, which causes brain damage and, you know, kills children's ability to function well in school and in life, and kills... Um, wildlife and, and, you know, disrupts the whole ecosystem and it gets into the wa the aquifer, the water systems. He said he would, he said he knew that they would find somebody to do it for them, someone with no scruples, but he, when he went to his maker, he didn't want that on his conscience. He wanted to go to God with clean hands. They fired him. They manipulated his, his housing situation so that he was then evicted. And that guy had been homeless in the street for two years and he spent 90 minutes a day reliably reading the Bible.
And he was as smart and as beautiful as anyone I have ever known. More recently, very recently, I met a scraggly old man everybody in the hood makes fun of. He's dirty. He's, he hasn't shaved and God only knows how long. Needs a bit of a haircut and a bath. He has a dog with him. And uh, he sits in places where he's allowed to sit. And people feed the dog. And they feed him. And sometimes he kind of babbles incoherently. And I thought he was schizophrenic or you know, had some other sort of uh, organic brain injury, perhaps. I talk to him because he's got a dog, and I feed the dog, and sometimes I feed him, and I try to help. So I gave him a couple of dollars recently and sat and talked to him and petted the dog. And this guy said, he, he opened up to me, Oh my God, by shutting my mouth and listening, I learned so much from this man, he was entirely coherent. He started expounding on, you know, the, how the Finns taught the Vikings how to build longboats. He taught me how to bend wood. He taught, he taught me. He heated up till the sap melts and then, oh, never mind. He put it under pressure. He taught me so much about history. He talked. He talked about how. Finland in ancient history was at one point reduced to only 3,000 breeding pairs and how they you, you weren't allowed to marry somebody from Finland. You had to marry someone from Sweden or Norway and on and on. Genetics, biochemistry. I just shut up and I just, I just listened. I learned more from that man in one conversation than I have learned from PhD level university professors with whom I had an entire class. No joke, because I had the ability and the intelligence to shut up and learn. And it turns out he had, um, he, his academic background was in uh, chemistry, and he had produced nine, count them, nine pharmaceuticals that were approved by the FDA that were in current use. He said, that's a pretty good record, isn't it? Nine drugs that are successful in helping people, maybe even saving their lives. And he said, and I can't even afford a cup of coffee. So this is what I want you to understand. Oh yeah, I also know someone who is homeless at one point because of heroism, sheer courage, someone who went up against international human traffickers who were selling children and killing some of them to sell their parts. That person was rendered homeless in the street for no other reason than that she had more courage than most of you ever will or you can even conceive of having. And yet people who don't understand what's really happening walk right past homeless people without any real concept of who it is. You may have just walked by a homeless person in the street. You may have just walked by an Einstein. You may have just walked by someone who approved the drug you're taking to save your life. You may have just walked by the guy who refused to develop something that could have caused brain damage in your children when they ate the vegetables that it had that had it on them. You may have just walked by a, a veteran who wouldn't commit war crimes against women, children, and old men because some egotistical jerk CO told him to. You may have just walked by a homeless person. And you may have just walked by one of the smartest, best people in the world. Think on these things, my friend. This is Nancy Love for the Planet Peace Project. More later, I'm just getting started here.